Comment Well, uh, I'm usually in the lunch meeting, so for anybody that does not know me, uh, my name is Amol Madera, and uh, I'm a Morristown resident. I've been part of the Rotary since the end of December last year, so I'm coming on one year. And, uh, uh oh, what does that mean? <laughs> there we go. Couldn't verify subscription. Who do I do? I talk to Ray about this? Who do I talk to? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I am here to. Why can I not? Good question. Get this to. All right, well, we'll leave it like that. Use your arrows. Well, I'm going to use this anyway, it's all right. Um, all right, so I wanted to talk about Diwali, which is uh, a very important um, religious occasion. Uh, it happens annually in the Hindu religion. There's no actual set date for Diwali. It happens anytime between the end of October and mid-November. Um, so the reason being is there is a Hindu calendar which is different than the traditional Gregorian calendar. And the festival actually lasts for about five days. This year it ended up coming early, October 27th is when it started. Normally it's right around this time, around the November 12th, uh, around the November 12th region. So what it is, it's the Festival of Lights. Okay. And really it's the story of, it's a, the age old story of, of light versus dark, evil versus good. What it is, is in different parts of the country it means different things. So in the south of India, it has to do with an ancient story of the King Rama's wife uh, being kidnapped by, by another evil king, and he puts together an army. The army then actually goes into Sri Lanka and builds a bridge to <coughs> bring her back. And as they bring her back, in order to guide her back to where she's going, they set up thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of lighted, like a lighted pathway, basically, little tea candle type lights that are going, and hence you have the Festival of Lights. So depending on where you are in the country, it coincides with different things. In the north, it's gonna be a very similar story. However, it's not the king's wife um, that is kidnapped. It's basically there's an evil king that is trying to take over uh, the entire region, the entire realm, and, uh, and again, an army is put together by the King Rama. The King Rama would almost be the equivalent in Greek mythology to like a Zeus be like the king of kings, right? The, it is a, a polytheistic um, religion, so there are uh, multiple gods. Uh, so, as, so as we go in the northern part of India, um, they're putting together an army to again defeat the evil king, and for the army to get back, that's where these lighted pathways are put together. So the, the tradition goes, um, and I'm sorry, there's one more. The part of India where I'm from is actually Gujarat. So Gujarat is the western state of India, it would be I would say geographically equivalent of like Northern California, Oregon type thing, if you're not equated to the US. And in the Gujarat, it actually coincides with the New Year. So in our particular calendar, the New Year happens to fall around the same time. So we also give praise to the goddess Lakshmi. Lakshmi is the goddess of prosperity and wealth, and Lakshmi is a female god. So the women actually make out very good because all the fathers are gonna give money to the daughters, all right? And the granddaughters and so forth. Not husband to wife, but it would go brother to sister, father to daughter, the granddaughter. If anybody here has met my daughter, uh, one of Ed's favorite people in the world, uh, she just makes out like a bandit this time because she's the baby in the family. So she was getting envelopes of uh, $51. Okay, I always think of another little side note. There's always an extra $1 it's a cultural thing. That's the good luck. So we don't give a $50 gift, we get 51. We don't give 25, we get 26 and so forth. Uh, so, that, so that goes on. The actual practice of it, essentially, it's a big party. It is a giant party. Imagine if New Year's Eve went on for five days. That's really what's going on. So there's not drinking or anything else going on, but it is like the happiest time you could possibly imagine. Everybody is lighting off fireworks. And I wanted to bring this up because we do have a pretty heavy Indian community here in Morris County, whether it be Parsippany, you see parts of Madison that are growing you know, more and more Indian. I'm out in Morristown. 
again, you see these things. And even within my own neighborhood, we'll have people that are lighting off fireworks in the street during the volley. So, you know, it's a, very, it's a very joyous time for us. And in the traditions of the Italians, we will feed and feed and feed you until you basically explode. <laughs> and this is gonna go on for days. So it is a very big family event. In the streets of India, everything is shut down. You just have, I mean, imagine you're gonna have the entire town of Madison come onto Dodge Field and there's gonna be music and there's gonna be dancing. And even though it's November, November in India is about 75 degrees, so it's pretty nice. Um, you know, everyone's gonna dress up. They're gonna dress up in their garb. They're gonna, all the kids are gonna have sparklers. They're gonna have food vendors. Nobody's asking for money. It's just, it's just literally a celebration. The whole place shuts down and for as crazy as it is, it's probably the most peaceful time of the year in India as well. Um, and this is a celebration that we have continued to go on over here. So what you see over here on the ground is called a rangoli. A rangoli is basically just a design. It doesn't necessarily have to be made of anything or out of any particular fabric. Uh, you know, over here in the US, we have a lot of people that will use it out of fabric just because it's easy again to fold up and put it in the attic and you know, use it for next year, kind of like we do with Christmas decorations. Um, however, if you go to India itself, you're going to see a lot of people are just going to make the design themselves right on the pathway in front of their house, right on the street. This could be inside the house, outside the house. It really doesn't matter. There's no real religious significance to the Rangoli. It's still, again, just part of the celebration and part of the traditions. And it's one of those things for the kids to, you can see there's kids over there that are basically, you know, drawing with chalk on the ground. Um, you know, again, if I made an equivalent, it would be about as religiously significant as, as a, uh, what do you call those little candy houses? Gingerbread, Gingerbread houses, sorry. Um, now, this over here, when we have the build up, when we have the build up to Diwali, you may, you may or may not have heard the term Navratri. Navratri is a celebration of dance. And that will start probably towards the end of September, beginning of October. And it's actually amazing. We do this over here in the US as well, but in India, obviously it's done to a bigger scale. When we have it in the US, you're gonna see a lot of people are taking over like high school gyms, things along those lines. They're fitting in a thousand people, and it's a very uniform dance that's not necessarily organized professionally in any way, like you're not taking a number or taking your spot or, you know, but it's still a very synchronized dance done in a circular fashion. Men do it, women do it. Um, depending on what part of India you're from, it kind of, you know, interprets the way the dance is. What you're seeing up here is you're seeing on stage on the upper uh, picture, um, you see the sticks. So I remember this from being a kid to, you know, all the way up to these days. This dance is done in a circular fashion and the sticks are, are linked together and then you turn around and put them together this way and you keep doing this circular motion of yourself and then a circular motion of the dance itself. And you're gonna see literally thousands of people in this circle. So you see circle upon circle going in and out and kids, um, kids, adults, you know, seniors, male, female, doesn't really matter and everybody is gonna dress up as well as they possibly, they're gonna dress up in their garb. Up on the upper right is actually uh, my sister and her family. So that's my sister in the black in the middle. Uh, those are her twins and that's her husband. And this is now spread far enough that they're in Southern Alabama and they have a huge Diwali celebration down in Southern Alabama. I won't lie, for, they've been there for 20 years. For the first 19, I thought they were the only Indian people in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they did, find, they did find a pretty big Indian community out there. And again, the same thing. What you're seeing where they're dressed up was actually from this past year. And um, they rented out this huge civic center. And again, they had all the food, they had all the music, they had all the celebration going on. Over here, we do it for one night in India. Everything's a little bit longer, so it goes on for about five days over there. And over here, you can see, uh, this is just, you know, it's not outside in the yard. And again, over here, this would be another indoor version of it. Um, so we wanted to give a little bit more significance to it itself. This is gonna be, as I said, it's kind of different in different parts of the country itself. So this would be the more Hindu version where we pray for the goddess Lakshmi for 
peace, excuse me, peace, prosperity, uh, commitment, happiness, wealth, and health in your life. And this is again because in the northwestern part of India, it is going to coincide with our new year. So it gets a little bit confusing, but what you need to know about Hinduism is there are a lot of different sects of Hinduism, kind of like Christianity. You know, you have your Protestant, you have your Catholic, and so forth. Um, but within the Hindu religion itself, when you start breaking up into these different sects, they also have different calendars and different methods in which they are going to celebrate. So it doesn't always fall on the same day. So where it falls with the new year for us, Diwali may be a few days earlier, a few days later for the people in the South. Um, again, within, within there, um, we have a couple of different um, sects over here. So what you have on the top left corner is tra tra excuse me, traditional Hinduism. Underneath over here would be the Jain God. Jain is J-A-I-N. Jain is, again, another subsect of Hinduism, but they are a lot more um, stricter in their religion. Uh, so most of the priests, in Hindu priests, would be Jain, uh, coming from the Jain subclass, I guess. And then over there would be Buddha. The reason I put this together is to show, you know, what the similarities are. You can see the similarities in the art, the similarities in the gods themselves, and obviously a similarity in the way that they're sitting, right? They're sitting in that way and they all have their hand up. The whole hand up thing, is, again, it's, it's a matter of peace. Um, so this is supposed to be the most peaceful time of the year. Uh, this again has to do with celebration. So the celebration goes on. It doesn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor. Obviously, there's a big discrepancy in India between the rich and the poor. But the celebrations are going to go on all over the country. Um, and it really is, like when we say the festival of lights, the words are broken up. Deepa Valley. Deepa Valley is the valley of the lights. So it's just the short is Diwali. Uh, and remember that. We would pronounce an Indian uh, an Indian W more like a V, so it's Diwali, not Diwali. Just so you know, um, you're going to see over there on the bottom right. You see kids just celebrating in the streets. This is what it's going to look like. Imagine a peaceful, less drunk version of Mardi Gras, I guess, right? <laughs> on Bourbon Street. That's really what you're going to see. Just kids celebrating, throwing fireworks up in the air, running around with sparklers. Um, some of you may also have heard the uh, Indian um, celebration of Holi. Over here we have the color run, right? You see the five Ks all the time with its own color. Well, this is also going on over here during Diwali. It's literally, people are gonna wear white and they're just throwing color at you the entire time. Uh, over here would be something similar to what you would see in anybody in everybody's household. So during Diwali time, this is gonna be going on for days. Those candles are gonna be lit and relit and you know, keep going over and over. And the same thing doesn't have to be inside, it's gonna be outside. You also, I had a picture somewhere. Here we go. Um, I always found this interesting because it, it's a cultural similarity, which I think is something to do with the geography. Over here, these are the lanterns. You know, you put a little light in there and they float up in the air. Yeah. We always kind of assume that those are associated with something more Asian, like a Japanese type tradition. Well, this is something that they do during the Diwali as well. And you can see they're very ornate. So they take quite a bit of time putting these things together and building them. It's a very light, airy paper, and they light the candle, and again, it's something. This is really a celebration of innocence for the kids. It's for something to, for us to smile and be happy and really unify over. Um, over here, sitting in the middle is actually a priest. So these are all just gifts that people are bringing over to the temple. Now, most of, all of these, the gifts are all food related. So most of them are going to be very, Indian sweets are not good for you, I won't lie, okay? <laughs> Indian sweets are made out of butter, sugar, they all have nuts, it's probably hard to find one without a nut. They're all, if you have a cholesterol problem, don't even walk near one, all right? They're all great, but they all taste great. But what they're doing is people, people of all sects, whether you have means or whether you don't have means, are going to bring these gifts over to the temple. The more religious folks are going to bring these gifts over to the temple. And then just like we would do over here with church donations, they're going to be handed out to help feed the poor. But you can see this guy is sitting in the basically in the middle of what could be a supermarket. And then on a macro level, this is what Diwali would look like for five nights in a row. Um, for anybody that's ever been, Indian architecture is unbelievable. I mean, it's 5,000 years old in some cases, but it's unbelievable. It has a strong Muslim influence. 
In the south, it has a strong Catholic influence because the Portuguese were there for quite a while. So if you go to South India, you're gonna see some of the most beautiful churches you've ever seen. Uh, Northern India, you're gonna see definitely a more Muslim influence like the Taj Mahal and things, you know, things along those lines. But everything is gonna be lit up, it's gonna be ornate, there's no expense spared, there's gonna be fireworks going on for days at a time, and this is really what the country is gonna look like for that five day period. And this would actually be what you're looking at is the capital in Delhi. Okay. This is just something I put in here more on my end. Um, so over here, when we're in the US and we've immigrated here, we have kind of an abbreviated version of everything, right? We can't really light off fireworks for five days. We, can't, uh, we definitely can't light off the big fireworks with all the trees we have here in Morris County. But we do something a little bit more in the house and we're gonna get a bunch of people in the house. So what you see over there, well, the upper right is my, upper left is my daughter. Um, then the rest is just family. This is over here, my wife and my mom in the kitchen cooking. And mom is, well, God bless, she's gone five years now, but tra just a traditional mom, everybody come over to the house, Diwali was over at her house, and it would be almost like the equivalent of a big Christmas dinner. So she would just feed you and feed you and it would just keep going on all day. She would say get there as early as you can because the food's gonna start at noon and you're just gonna keep going until basically you can't move anymore. Right? <laughs> and you know, we're gonna sit around the table and we're gonna be thankful of each other and we're gonna have a good time together and it's an, almost a time for us to renew relationships. So this would be a very small version. Um, who you see on the upper right, those two uh, women over there are cousins of mine and they would traditionally host it, uh, the Diwali. And when they would host it, they had bigger homes around in, uh, in kind of central Pennsylvania with bigger homes. And we would have, oh, I don't know, 50 to 75 family members come over and just everybody from all day, all night, have a good time. And if you can't make it home, just you know find a pillow and sleep over. And this again is gonna be, this is my sister's family and this is their celebration uh, from about a year ago. And you can see, I wanted to put it in this picture because you can see over here that they did rent out like a public spot and they did make it very ornate inside and they had the lights and the decorations and they really try to make it as much of a celebration. They want to make it as memorable as possible. And this over here is um, from this year. This is right in the Edison area. So this is kind of part two of my presentation that I wanted to give a quick blurb about. Um, this was from a group called IATI, A-A-Y-A-T-I. And IATI is a group, put, is, a, is a fundraising organization put together by a friend of mine to help women in India, younger women in India, especially the ones that are out in the villages that are not educated, that don't know about the changes going on with their bodies, that don't know even their um, legal rights when it comes to you know being attacked by men because things like that still happen. In, Backwoods India. And this is a fundraiser they did. So actually the girl in the middle with the pink top and the blue dress is the one that heads the organization. Um, I did want to get her in here at some point to talk to the group about her organization as well, but that'll be coming um, in the future. In the meantime, she gave me some information that I could share with you. So with that being said, this dance is called the Garba, G-A-R-B-A. And the Garba was put together for, uh, for them. They do it every year as a fundraiser. And they had well over a thousand people show up in Edison High School this year. So they used the entire gym and the cafeteria and everything you could think of and raised, I don't know, I think they raised over $25,000 for the charity itself. And speaking of which, just if anybody wants to know about the charity, you can see me separately. The reason I even brought this up, when I first joined uh, Rotary, this is back in, I think December is when I was still coming as a guest, um, Ed Kalinka had spoke to me about Rotary International and asked me if I had any thoughts about Rotary International and what we can do. And Rotary is very big in India, and I also do have a lot of family members that are in Rotary in India as well. And uh, I just thought for anybody that's interested in this charity itself, I do have a PowerPoint, they do have their own website, and you can kind of get to know a little bit about what's going on with the charity. Um, and I'm hoping that sometime in the future that Rotary and the charity can do something together as well because it would give us a great uh, international representation. All right, that's all I have.